Now we are on M1 and M1 needs us to analyze how computational thinking skills can impact software design and the quality of the software applications produced. This is from the spec directly from the assignment brief as well. Now this part is a part from the assignment brief which is in task one and it says we need to analyze the application of logic to program design considering principles of mathematical and propositional logic the use of sets and iteration. I just have each of them labeled here. Now this part here, which you can see highlighted in the box, that part was taken directly from the spec. So if I go back to the spec and I go to A5, this was all copied from A5. So they've told us what we need to speak about and what we need to speak about is essentially everything in A5. And luckily for us, we're gonna copy that. And A5, let me zoom in as much as I can. A5 tells us exactly what each thing is. Now, even though it said what each thing is, we should still go and do our own research, right? But before we even get to this section, because it says that we need to analyze how computational thinking skills can impact software design and the quality of the software applications produced, we need to go back and do a mini recap because this M1 and P1 is going to be like an overarching mini recap of everything. Keeping in mind, M1 is to analyze and D1 is to evaluate. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put in the description the difference between analyze and evaluate. Analyze simply means to produce or give as much information as possible so someone has the information that they need to look through the information to make a decision. Now the evaluation, that's gonna be where you make a decision. Is this good? Is this bad? If you think it is good, why it is good, give an argument for good. If you think it is bad, say why it's bad, give an argument for bad. But let me not focus on D1 for now. So in my notes here, I've said recap computational thinking skills. So again, just mention what they are and give a sentence, a single sentence on each one. So let me go back to decomposition again. There's a process of breaking down a problem into smaller subsections. So each section can be... Um, applied or attacked at once or, or solved at once, not applied or attacked, or solved at once. So that's what decomposition is. To decompose something is to break it down. When animals and plants decompose, they're broken down into a different form. So that's what it typically means. Recap also software design. What is software design? What are the steps of software design? And now is after that, so this is one decent paragraph mentioning all the skills of computational thinking. This is another decent paragraph again, mentioning all the stuff that we recap from software design from the previous section. And next we have quality of software application. The list is in A6. So it's kind of weird the way that they've done M1 in my opinion, but I think we need to go to the A6 one first. So let me go back to the spec. This is A5. This is the stuff that we're gonna speak about here. But it also in the criteria wants us to speak about the quality of application software. So before we can go into what makes it quality, we speak about quality first. These are the things that Pearson's, that the BTEC board has said, make applications quality, right? So we need, we need to speak about efficiency and performance, maintainability, portability, reliability, robustness, and usability. These are just a few of the things. This is not an exhaustive list, but these are just a few of the things that we can speak about. So what, what is efficiency and why would we design for efficiency? Now, the efficiency point here has quite a few things. So it mentions uh, the CPU cycles, the processor time, the memory space, ac accessing storage media. Why should we have a program that's efficient? So what is efficiency and why should we design a program that is efficient? You're going to go away, you do your research, and again, whatever you find, you reference it. And I would ask that same question for each of those points. So I said, what is efficiency and why should we do it? The next one is going to be maintainability. Maintainability, obviously I spelled that wrong. The next one is going to be portability as well. We need to understand what these things are and why it is important for us to design programs to be efficient, maintainable, portable. Go through this entire list. I don't want to do everything here on screen because I think once you get the gist of three or four of them, it's the same process again and again and again. I know that this part is for D1, but because D1 wants us to evaluate, I want us to have all the information in the analysis section first, 
and then after we have all the information in the analysis section then for d1 we can evaluate we can give our own um, account we can give our own interpretation so do i think that efficiency is important of course it's important even though we have programs running on very very fast processes nowadays if they were not efficient what would happen in some cases is that the program might grow and keep growing and keep growing and take up all the cpu cycles all the processing time use the maximum memory of the system and maybe in some cases use the maximum temporary storage of the system as well so my hard drive would be full, my CPU would be slow, I can't do anything else, I cannot multitask, my memory space would be full as well, so my CPU cannot pull anything else into memory to hold temporarily. Whatever reasons you think, but before we can do any of that evaluation stuff, before we can mention our own personal reasons for thinking it's good or bad, we have to have all the information at hand, then we can make an educated uh, guess or an educated judgment, let's say. So that's why I say we go through this list first and weirdly enough, we do this afterwards. So iteration, what is iteration? Why it is important? Mathematical logic, what is it? Why is it important? It really doesn't matter if you do it before or after because again, this is analysis and this is just gathering of information. I just think it's best that we leave, well, we have to leave the evaluation section to last, but in analyzing the information or analyzing the data, we can have, we need to have all of this information in M1. That's my opinion of that. Here I've said, what is iteration? Or what makes this principle or technique important? Luckily for us, they've told us what iteration is here. Iteration, the repetition of a computational procedure applied to the result of a previous application. Right? The repetition of a computational procedure. So repeating a process that was used before. That's more or less what it is. And we just build on top of it, build on top of it, build on top of it. So I think I gave the example before, Microsoft doesn't need to come in and spend a whole one year working on Microsoft Word only. What they could do, they could make a base menu system. So let me open Word on my desktop and I go to blank. They could make, this is a menu system, right? This is the, the Microsoft Office banner, let's say. They make a base menu system first and then they add on top of it. So Microsoft Word doesn't need as many design features, let's say, as PowerPoint right and then maybe references for excel needs more features so they make a base layer first and then they iterate on the they simply add more to that process as and when needed now mathematical logic i'll do the same thing again what is mathematical logic what makes this principle or technique important it's not going to be important to every person every program but in the general in the grand scheme of things generally speaking what is it and what makes it important so here I have the entire thing now. What is mathematical logic? What makes this principle or technique important? You're going to Google what mathematical logic is in programming and they've given you some speaking points here. So use these speaking points. So for example, you find a definition for what mathematical logic is. Then you speak about what is an inference? What does it mean to be consistent? What does it mean for something to have completeness? What does it mean to verify? Right? And then you move down to propositional logic. Uh, to demonstrate the function of an algorithm. So again, what does that mean? You go and find a decent definition of every single word here. Everything that has a comma is something that you need to speak about. So for example, under mathematical logic, obviously you give a brief definition or description of what it is, and then you find a way to add the definition for inference and what it actually means. Then you find a way to add consistency. You find a way to add a definition for consistency and maybe an example as well if something is consistent that's obviously very good if something has completeness that means it, it is complete to the standard that is required it has met the specification and you, for verification you need to make sure that things work as they should you verify against the original so if the original thing needed to count to 10 for example right your system should count to 10 so for every single thing under each bullet point, you need to mention it. And that's how I think you're going to get the full marks. So just to review, we're going to be looking at iteration, mathematical logic, propositional logic, and sets. And how are these things going to help you design better programs? Now, we know what better programs are because we have a list from ASICs. These are the things that make a program good. Now, that's the reason I was saying you could have this section before or after. It really doesn't matter because this section is just an analysis. So there's no right to or wrong way to analyze something once you have all the information present. So you could put this section before. You could put it after this section I have below. Doesn't really matter. 
simply say what is iteration again what makes this principle or technique important and how is this technique going to be used to design better programs how is mathematical logic going to be used to design better programs how is propositional logic going to be used to design better programs so on and so forth and we just keep adding on to that again you can add it before or after me personally i would add it afterwards because i want to speak about what makes a good program a good program first and then i would go into how do i actually design or or program or make a good program i would add it before but again it doesn't really matter so hopefully that was useful to everyone